So, this is my Henry. It's a new, original, deluxe engraved second edition made by Henry Repeating Arms of Bayonne, New Jersey. This rifle is in 4440 caliber, but it can also be had in 45 Colt. There is also a shorter carbine version available. This video is just my personal opinion of the gun after owning and shooting it over the past several months. There are several concessions made to the new Henry, most notably the caliber change from the obsolete 44 Henry rimfire to current commercially loaded centerfire ammunition. So on the inside, looks like we've got some MIM parts in here. That uh, MIM stands for metal injection molding, which is definitely not a 19th century technique, but it's uh, employed by most gun makers today, and uh, I don't have any issues with that. It's probably why this gun uh, runs so smooth right out of the box. There are several major differences to the Henry than on the later Winchesters. Most notably, the open magazine tube and the exposed follower that prevents the installation of a wooden forestock. Also, the lack of a cartridge loading gate on the receiver. The Henry is loaded by rotating a shroud at the end of the barrel to expose the magazine opening. Despite its drawbacks, this system is much faster for loading and unloading than on the gated, improved handle. As far as safety mechanisms go on this gun, it's a uh kind of sparse which is fine with me this gun was designed in the 1860s when there weren't a lot of personal injury lawyers around and people realized that guns were dangerous and handled them accordingly but this has the little uh, lever lock that the original one had that will keep the lever from being accidentally cycled and then on the new version there's a half cock notch which i don't believe the original one had and and I guess uh, as long as you're, you were careful, you could probably uh, carry a live round in the chamber with it on half cock. Since the new Henry has a hardened brass receiver and modern high strength steel barrel and magazine, I'm going to load the ammunition with smokeless powder and cast lead bullets. Just keep in mind. This rifle is still a 160 year old design, so it makes no sense to hot rod it. So, in conclusion, I'm very happy with my new Henry. The fit and finish on my rifle is flawless. The brass receiver and the one-piece barrel and mag tube are highly polished. The figure in the walnut stock is spectacular. I have fired over 500 reloads through my Henry and have found it to be completely reliable and very accurate. The much maligned loading procedure, open magazine tube, and the lack of a forestop, which gives the rifle its unique appearance, haven't been much of a problem for me. Under prolonged firing though, the barrel will get hot. After a little range time, mastering the Henry hop and loading procedure becomes second nature. If you look back at the historical record, you won't find many reports of the open mag tube and receiver causing problems. The only recorded incident I could find of a mag tube being dented was caused by being run over by stampeding horses. So, 
it seems back then as now. If you keep in mind the gun's design limitations and operate and maintain your rifle accordingly, you won't have any problems. This Henry is a little more spendy than its imported counterpart. But if you check on Gun Genie, you might be pleasantly surprised how much lower the street price is compared to the MSRP. So, if you're interested in experiencing one of the first practical repeaters, you might want to give the Henry Repeating Arms original Henry a look.